a school lunch consisting of a turkey and cheese sandwich, a banana, and a bag of chips. Well, that sounds pretty healthy, right? Well, not according to some at a school in North Carolina. It's a story that's gotten a lot of people talking. Fox 26's Kristen Kane joins us live in the newsroom with more on this. Kristen? Yeah, well, Don, get this. The preschooler ended up eating three chicken nuggets for lunch instead after the state employee told her the lunch her mother packed did not meet state nutrition requirements. How chicken nuggets are any healthier than a sandwich, chips, and fruit? I have no idea. And we got great. When an agent with the Department of Agriculture was inspecting lunch boxes in a North Carolina classroom, the agent determined a four year old's turkey and cheese sandwich, banana, chips, and apple juice did not meet federal guidelines, which means lunches must consist of one serving of meat, milk, and grain, and two servings of fruit or veggies. Because the agent thought there were portions missing from the girl's lunch, she was apparently given three chicken nuggets from the cafeteria, and her mom was charged a buck 25. Parents here in Fort Bend ISD say that lunch is plenty healthy. That would be something I'd put in my own child's lunch without, without questioning. I think that that's healthier than a lot of the meals that they serve. Turkey and cheese is much better than taco meat and chips. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think too. That's what you think too? While they are encouraged to pack a balanced lunch for their child, they are not allowed to send along any of the sugary stuff. Just no candy in the classroom. You ever told in school, like, if you bring candy or if you bring cookies, you're not supposed to do that? Yeah, well, we mostly get told that every single day because someone does not follow the rules. They bring, like, m and it's a like, type of candy or, like, chips or um, cookies. UT Health dietitian Carol Wolin Rickland says keeping sugar out of a child's diet is a good thing, but a sandwich, fruit, and chips? Come on! A sandwich, whether it's turkey breast, chicken breast, roast beef, any whole meat, not a processed meat that's loaded with fat. Um, some fruit with it and then you know most kids do eat chips and finally nobody understands why the girl was given chicken nuggets I, I question chicken nuggets chicken rings any of those processed chicken foods that may have been higher in preservatives and additives it's processed chicken deep fried so I don't know how that's better a state rep in North Carolina is now looking into the lunch incident after the girl's mother filed a complaint. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Monday, February 27th, 2012, and I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com, and on YouTube is ddarko2012 and ddarko2013. So please go and check out those channels and the website. All right, the first article I have up is Indian government demands Dow's removal as Dow Chemical Company, the removal as Olympic sponsor. Uh, if you're in the U.K., you're probably more aware of this than us over here in the United States. It's the first time I've heard of this, but the Indian government has demanded the Dow Chemical Company is dropped as London 2012 Games sponsor by the International Olympic Committee after repeated protests by the country's Olympic body have failed, officials said Monday. It's in the first time that the Indian government has uh, intervened in the matter within the sports ministry, sending a strongly worded letter to the IOC chief. Um, goes on here and it says, For Dow Chemicals to be engaged as an official sponsor was extremely distressing considering the company was linked with an industrial disaster in which thousands were killed and even larger numbers incapacitated for life, the letter said. And of course, this is all supposed to be a big green Olympics, right? It's all about being green. And maybe they took away McDonald's uh, because McDonald's is one of the biggest polluters in the world, right? But they're, hey, they're green. World Bank proposes global uh, coalition to save oceans. World Bank was on fr Friday to propose a coalition of governments global organizations and other groups who and other groups to protect the oceans aiming to raise 1.5 billion in the next five years for the purpose the world bank president robert zolik who's now stepping down could be replaced by hillary clinton was to tell a global conference in singapore that the new partnership would bring together various groups to confront problems of overfishing marine degradation and loss of habitat world bank wants control of the high seas as a proponent of legitimate free markets this writer is always up for a little creative entrepreneurship. However, there is a considerable difference between building productive markets and engaging in monopolistic piracy. And it goes on here and it says that the elites uh, that operate them have long been familiar with a pirate's life and not a fun-filled adventure with time rope swinging swashbuckling brands. 
In reality, the World Bank has long used the threats of environmental destabilization, some of them real, some of them fake, as tools for the centralization of resources into the hands of mega corporations. And if one was to attempt to sum up exactly what is what is that the World Bank actually does in a single phrase, it would probably probably be, quote, resource domination, end quote. This domination is achieved through the strict lending guidelines that sovereign countries have to commit in order to attain financing from supranational entities. And finishing up, environmental manipulation has long been used in the past by World Banks as a cover for resource piracy. Moving on here, we have BP. BP wins most Pentagon fuel awards in the year after a golf explosion, and they're getting towards closer towards trial here. And there's a good chance that uh, nothing's going to happen to them. Maybe just a small shakedown uh, that's basically minuscule compared to the amount of profits that they've made. It says here, USDA to give Monsanto's new GMO crops special seed approval. That's right. It says here that Monsanto is losing sales with longer approval terms. Despite links to organ damage and mutated insects, the USDA says it is changing the rules so that genetic, genetically modified seed companies like Monsanto will get speedier regulatory reviews. With the faster reviews, there will be even less time spent on evaluating the potential dangers. While the changes are expected to take full effect in March, and it goes on and says the current USDA process takes longer than they would like due to, quote, public interest. And it goes on and says, well, what is the public interest? All well, the public interest are activist groups attempting to bring the dangers of GMO crops to life in a match that some would say was made in hell. It says here, the Dow and Monsanto companies joined forces to poison America's heartland in a partnership to reintroduce the use of the herbicide 2,4-D, one half of the infamous defoiling Agent Orange, which is used by American forces to clear the jungle during Vietnam. And this is due to the problem with corn farmers with super weeds that have been developing resistance to America's best-selling herbicide Roundup. Then we have genetically engineered salmon to go on sale in the United States, but without any warning labels. And of course, you have what? Walmart uh, putting the genetically modified corn in their stores with without any labels as well. We have France asked EU to suspend GM crop authorization. France's ecology ministry said Monday it had to ask European regulators to suspend authorization for the use of gen genetically modified uh, MON810 maize crops from the U.S. company Monsanto based on new studies. The request is based on the latest scientific studies which show that the use of GM crops pose significant risk for the environment, the ministry said in a statement. It went on and said, quote, if the European Union does not act, we can invoke the safeguard clause, end quote, which allows EU nations to independently restrict or prohibit the sales of the products it said. Harvard study pasteurized milk from industrial dairies linked to cancer. The truth has once again shaken the foundation of the American Tower of Babel that is mainstream science. With a new study out, Harvard University showing the pasteurized milk product from factory farms is linked to causing hormone-dependent cancers. Turns out that the concentrated animal feeding operations model, CAFO, of raising cows on factory farms turns out milk with dangerously high levels of estrone sulfate, an estrogen compound linked to testicular, prostate, and breast cancers. Medscape offers doctors continuing education credits for reading CDC's latest anti-raw milk propaganda. Demand for raw milk is off the charts all across the country, which is presumably why the United States Centers for Disease Control and Prevention conveniently decided to release a new raw milk hit piece recently, which was carefully de uh, designed to scare people away from drinking it, filled with lies, distortions, and blatant data manipulations. says so this so-called study is now being used as propaganda, uh, to brainwash doctors as Medscape, a popular information resources or resource for physicians, is offering the medical community continuing education credits for reading the article and taking the short test. In case you missed it, Adam Langer from the CDC and several colleagues recently dredged up some data from between 93 and 2006, which they claim that raw milk, also known as fresh milk, is 150 times more likely to cause foodborne illnesses, outbreaks, than pasteurized milk. As usual, the data was selectively cherry-picked, uh, massaged, and deliberately crafted in such a way to vilify raw milk and make it out to be the type of dangerous poison all under the guise of science. You can go in there and the links will be posted. Non-pasteurized dairy products, disease outbreaks, and there you go. There's the actual article or findings right there. We have plenty of news to get to still, so just hang in there with me. We have uh, radioactive rain across the United States is natural. So this is from, of course, uh, live science, which is just pure propaganda most of the time. But uh, it goes on there, and it says that there appears to be radiation literally raining down upon the earth. 
And uh, in several new YouTube videos shot in the United States, Canada, radiation detector Geiger counters are showing buzzing at an alarming rate um, when uh, aimed at wet grass and puddles shortly after it's rained. So, is there a cause for alarm? Well, this is on the internet. See, YouTube, you know, it's on the internet. You, know, you found that on the internet, so it's not real. I love that. You ever hear of that if you ever talk to people that um, usually are just sheeple, right? You, oh, you must have heard that on the internet. Oh, where'd you get that? Oh, the internet. Oh, okay, that's fantasy land. That's not real, right? So, is there any cause for alarm? In fact, here, this is where they tell you everything's going to be okay. In fact, radioactive rain is not a new health threat or evidence of a cover-up by the nuclear industry, but rather is indicative um, of just how many naturally occurring radioactive particles there are in the Earth's atmosphere, kind of like fluoride, right? Naturally occurring, uh, occurring fluoride um, in the water supply. But let's not remember this article from the 21st, just a few days ago. Radiation detected 400 miles off the Japanese coast. So yeah, contamination from the Fukushima power plant disaster has been detected as far as 400 miles off Japan. Um, and also, you have Canada uh, also finding um, radiation in their water supplies. And like I mentioned before, an increase in thyroid cancer um, uh, cases. So, you know, just do your own research, I guess, is what I'm trying to say here. Unlimited human eggs, potential for fertility treatment. So once you do have cancer from radiation due to microwaves, cell phone, radiation, uh, that doesn't exist, don't worry. If you just read the CDC and the, uh, all them, they'll tell you that it, you don't actually get it. There's actually a healthy dose of radiation. But when you do get it, because you will get it eventually, a little tumor or something like that. If you're on the phone for more than 20 minutes a week, which is the average use according to their uh, science, their, um, their st uh, basically their research, it may be possible for one day to create an unlimited supply of human eggs to aid. So, yeah, that was the long theory is that once, the, um, once these eggs are gone, they're gone, right? So you don't want to lose them. It's, it's kind of a big deal. So now for those that are uh, uh, affluent, right, and you live past all the eugenics or live through it and get to a certain age and you have enough money, well, then you can go ahead and you can pay for it so that you can have children again, which makes sense, you know, because it's all about uh, depopulation. It's all about selective breeding. Um, and having the right genes, but also having enough money because cancer is a big business. Climate scientists admits duping skeptic group to obtain documents. That's right, legislation to fight global warming has disappeared from Washington's policy agenda. But the battle over climate science continues to escalate. The latest skirmish uh, culminated the admission Monday night that Peter Gleick, a climate scientist and author, assumed a fake identity to obtain documents that would expose the inner workings of a climate skeptics group. Again, live science, more propaganda, heartland gate, climate beliefs don't hinge on leaked documents, that's right. So does anybody care? Well, when you start paying more for energy and for food and all that and paying a gas tax and because of a cap and trade or carbon tax and you're freezing your home due to global warming and due to smart meters, uh, you know, hey, you might have a beef with that. So 2011 was ninth warmest year in decades, NASA finds, so it's getting warmer, everybody. Uh, global warming could make us shorter after horses are found to have shrunk the last time the world heated up. So global warming um, is going to cause you to get shorter. So what do we have? New York man grows six inches through surgery. This is funny because I actually saw this article after I watched uh uh, Gattaca. I've seen it a long time ago, but I watched it again. Great movie. But yeah, that's what he did in that movie, right? He got a little bit taller. Then we have cancer cure hopes as genetic code hereditary uh, breast disease is mapped for the first time. So yeah, the genetic code of the most common type of hereditary breast cancer has been mapped for the first time, raising hopes of what? Better diagnosis, i.e. selective breeding and treatment. Of course, the money-making business. Remember this article, Disturbing Gattacan Actions, Can You Be Fired for Your Genes? So if you have breast cancer or something like that, you may not get a job. Cancer patients die alone in hotel room after hospital sends him there to free up some beds. Then we have Elderly ignored and treated as objects in the healthcare system. Just pull yourself together. It's what doctors told a patient who was fighting allergic reaction after eating chicken nuggets, and he died later after. Brave Boy 12 calls halt to cancer treatment. It was a bold decision. Well, you better be careful. Attempted murder. Mother who denied autistic son cancer meds is found guilty. So the CDC is warning that the new swine flu strain has pandemic potential. It was created in a lab, so that would make sense. Farmer faces possible three-year prison term for feeding his community. An Arizona man is arrested after rescuing and adopting a drowning raccoon. And while a gay judge refuses to marry straight people, a gay Marine's homecoming kiss goes viral. Seven states sue over the requirement that employers cover contraception workers' health plan. 
This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.